It's Knowledge Assessment T3. T3 just means Topic 3 from the Training Package. So how does the video work? Just quickly, we ask the question of the problem, then you pause the video and try to answer or solve the problem. Then we give you a hint and again you pause the video and then continue after. Four, the answer is then explained. This is the power of this particular delivery system. We not only pose the questions, but we give you the answers and we explain the answers. And step five, of course, play the video again and proceed to the next question. So here is question one. Using Fleming's left-hand rule, see if you can label the fingers. So the fingers are labeled A, B, and C. See if you can label what they represent. Here's a hint. This is a generator. Is this a generator or a motor? So we're talking about Fleming's left-hand rule. Is it a motor or a generator? So A indicates the direction of the current flow. That's through the green wire. B is the magnetic field direction. You can see the magnetic field is flowing from north to south. So that B is your finger sticking straight out. And C is the movement of direction. So we're physically moving the wire through the magnetic field in the vertical plane. So it's using Fleming's left hand rule for generators. Question two, what unit is magnetic flux measured in? So what are the units that we measure our magnetic flux? A, amp turns, B, Weber's, C, amp turns per meter squared, or D, Tesla's. Hint, magnetic flux is about lines of flux over a specific area. And the ants is Weber's. So it's a Weber is so many lines of flux over so many square meters all combined into the one thing. Or into the one unit. Question three, what causes hysteresis losses? A, high reluctance. B, low permeability. C, residual magnetism. Or D, high flux density. Here's the hint. What is the effect when a material can't change its magnetic direction quickly? That's what hysteresis is. But what's happening when a magnetic material can't change its molecules magnetic direction easily and quickly? So the result is residual magnetism because it means that some of the molecules all le le are left nicely aligned producing a very faint but residual magnetic field. So, and that's what we call the hysteresis losses. Three, sorry, four. Determine the flux in a magnetic circuit that has a reluctance of 14,500 amp turns per Weber and applies a magnet demotive force of 4,200 amp turns. Again, remember that the equation is in the units used. Here's your hint. The equation Again, it's in the units. Reluctance is equal to amp times turns divided by Weber's. That's what amp turns per Weber means. Amps times turns divided by Weber's. So then you'll have to transpose it, of course. So pause here. So as we said, reluctance equals amp times turns divided by Weber's. 
Again, as I mentioned before, just to point it out again, there's the formula, right there. So reluctance equals amps multiplied, that's what the dot means, multiplied, and the slash means divide, quite literally. So the Weber's R equal to, we've just transposed the equation to make Weber's is equal to 4,200 divided by 1450, giving us 0 0.29 Weber's. Five, determine the flux density if a flux of 750 times 10 to the minus 6 Weber's in an iron core with a cross-sectional area of 1,400 millimetres squared. Hint. Again, the equation is T or Tesla's is equal to Weber's divided by cross-sectional area. So Tesla's equals the number of Webers divided by the cross-sectional area, but remember it has to be in metres squared. But they gave it to us in millimetres squared. So our Tesla's will be 750 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 1,400 times 10, that should have been a 10, to the minus 6 to put us back into metres squared. So we end up with the two minus 6's cancelling each other out and 750 divided by 1400 equals 0 0.536 Tesla. Question 6. An EMF appearing on the secondary of a transformer when the primary is energised is termed what? A. Self-induction B. Applied EMF induction C. Left-hand rule induction or D. Mutual induction Here's the hint list the two main types of induction. What are they? And then how would they apply here? There are only two types of induction. So in this particular case, because there is a primary and a secondary, therefore it's not self-induction, it must be mutual induction. So inducing a voltage in one side energizes the opposite side. So an EMF appearing on the secondary of a transformer when the primary is energized has got to be mutual induction. Seven, an EMF induced into a coil as a result of a current flowing through the coil will do what? A. Not affect the circuit current. B. Applies the applied EMF. C is out of phase with the applied voltage. D results in about twice the voltage being dropped. So pause here while you think about it. Here's the hint. What are the characteristics of induction and Lenz's law? So when you think about induction and Lenz's law, So it's all about opposes the EMF. An EMF induced into a coil as a result of a current through the coil opposes the applied EMF, and that's called Lenz's law. Eight, for an air cord inductor, sorry, inductor, if both the number of turns and the length are doubled, the inductance will do what? So this is what we would call factors affecting inductance. A, 
be increased by a factor of 4, be halved, be unchanged, be doubled. Here's the hint. So what are the factors that affect inductance? And we've got two of them at play here. So if the air core inductor, if both the number of turns and the length are doubled. So we're doubling the turns and we're doubling the length. So it would be doubled. The answer is doubled. Because the length is going up by double, but when you double the turns, you're taking those up by the square. So the length, sorry, the number of turns is going up by the square, but the length being doubled is bringing it down by half. So you're kind of going up by the square and then coming back by the half, which means it's simply doubled times two. And you can see that there in the formula is the formula for inductance. L being inductance, number of turns squared. We doubled that. And we also doubled the length, but see the division sign here? So the length is inversely proportional. So they kind of cancel each other out. And it means that we've doubled. Determine the voltage induced in a coil of 400 turns when the flux is reduced from 64 milliwebers to 14 milliwebers in 0.5 of a second. So you need your voltage formula here. Here's the hint. The equation is again in the units. Reluctance equals the amps times the turns divided by the webers. And then remember to transpose the equation. So here's our answer. EMF equals flux change divided by time multiplied by the number of turns. So our EMF drop from 64 to 14, so we subtract those, that's the change. Multiply by our 0.5, which is 0.5 a second, multiply by our 400 turns. And when we do the maths, it comes out at 40 volts, which is 50 milliwatt Weber change within half a second, and there were 400 turns. Ten, determine the force acting on a 250 millimeter length of conductor, which carries seven amps in a magnetic flux of 820 milli tesla. So pause here. Here's your hint. The equation again is in the units, so force equals Flux multiplied by length multiplied by current. So here's the, the equation. Force N in Newtons equals the flux density Teslas multiplied by the length in meters multiplied by the current in amps. So it's simply 820 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 0.25. O multiplied by 7. Remember we had to convert our 250 millimetres back to metres, so everything's in metres. Current is in amps and flux density is in Teslas. So we end up with a force of 1.44 Newtons. So that brings us to the end of T3. Now again, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about electromagnetism from our questions and worked answers.